the time we kind of robbed an art museum. I used to install cellular repeater systems. Mostly in hospitals, sometimes in fun places. This time was the High Museum of Art in Atlanta. This is not my malicious compliance, it's Jerry's. His compliance was to let us do what we do. So we had to work at night, no exceptions. And we had to have a security guard escort everywhere, because anything we could possibly break at 3 a.m. would be worth about $5 million. Enter Jerry, the second-in-command security guy who pulled double time to escort us after his regular shifts. His job was to make sure we did not steal a couple of Andy Warhols. Nothing else. See there were lots of places, and doors we needed to get through, and security didn't have access to the keys. So us being contractors we brought out every trick we knew to bypass a lock as we usually did. After we had it picked or bypassed about seven locks in a museum we turned to our security escort, and asked so at what point does this this start looking bad? And he said six locks ago, I'm keeping a list. Sure enough, he had a notebook, and was writing down every way we broke through security. When we went back for phase two he was head of security, and most our tricks didn't work anymore. But security had a better set of keys. HR says only smart people can work here. I work for a small company, and we have a one-man HR department. We often get all sorts of memo detailing policies that sound good on paper, but never make practical sense. I think maybe HR got all its education on YouTube or Reddit, or learned it while being mentored after hours by the CEO. Recently HR implemented a new standardized testing for screening new candidates, which scores candidates on their skills in mathematics, language, logic, and a bunch of industry-specific questions. The idea is to weed out those who present well on paper and in person, but in fact can't do the most basic stuff. While this could be an excellent idea to weed out the morons that keep walking through the door, HR thought it's an excellent idea to make everyone including those who's already been here for years do it as well, for the employee files of course. HR gave a metrics for where scores should range for new candidates, sent us links to complete the tests, and requested that they are completed by Friday. As we all know, HR never do things just for employee files. We suspect HR is trying to get rid of a few crucial people who are not great with computers, not fast on the calculator, but are in fact the beating souls to the workplace. Everyone at the office pretty much all boycotted the test. When HR pressured the CEO to threaten our bonuses, we begrudgingly complied. HR wants to score us based on arbitrary standardized tests as benchmark? Sure. We spent the next three days after hours working on the tests together, one test at a time. At the end, we all scored nine tenths in every category, because we got some pretty bright people helping out. And guess what? We forced HR to do the same test, and HR scored five tenths for math, four tenths for logic. Guess who should be on the chopping block? Install it where? Okay. I worked for an alarm system installer for almost two years. By the second year I was a team lead for a small sales area. One day one of my techs called frustrated, and tells me that the homeowner was drunk, and insisted on putting the glass break detector in the hallway of the mobile home because that's where the salesperson said it would go. I go over to this mobile home, and quickly realize this person isn't going to be swayed. I smile, and say I understand completely. The customer is always right. I then turn and give the tech a wink and say go ahead, and install it where he wants. The work is done, and the customer signs the document that says the work has been done to his specifications. Now a glass break detector basically does what it sounds like. You mount it on the ceiling above a window, and if the window breaks, the detector hears the sound, and send a signal to the panel. This happens whether you arm the panel for stay or away because windows can still be broken while you are at home. This also is an immediate alarm so you don't have a system countdown to turn off the panel. This is tuned for the frequency of broken glass but it will trigger for any sufficiently loud noise. We do the test with either a glass break sound app on the phone, or a power drill, this just happened to be mounted above his granddaughter's door. She apparently slammed the door a lot. A week later I come to the house on a service call since the alarm has gone off multiple times. The man is no longer drunk, and after explaining the situation he is actually very apologetic, and says he regrets having us see him drunk. We moved the glass break to a better location, and never had a problem with his system for the rest of the time I was there. Coworker doesn't want me touching his customers' cars? Okay very well then. This happened about 5 years ago. I used to work at a dealership, I was part of the detailing crew. There was about 5 of us in that department, but only 3 of us on site at a time. For content, 
When a sales rep makes a sale on a vehicle they bring it to us to get it detailed along with stickers removed from windows, nothing too serious as they are already fairly clean. Now the way this dealership works is, there's only one detailing department for five different dealerships. So we would detail cars for Toyota, Volkswagen, Nissan, GMC, and Hyundai. So yes a fairly small detailing squad for five different dealerships. It sounds a lot, but surprisingly it wasn't too bad. This specific sales rep, we'll call him Jake. Jake was married to this other sales rep we'll call Mary. For whatever reason Jake hated my guts for almost the entire time I was employed there, no idea why. My assumptions is that one day he saw me talking to his wife which I didn't know it was his wife at the time. But that's because I was getting some info on a trade in that came in, and I was thinking about purchasing that car, it was a 2016 Nissan 370Z Nismo. No I never ended up buying it, I just wanted to get more information about the car, how much the monthly payments would be etc I guess he didn't like me talking to her so he hold a grudge against me. Again this is just speculations. Also I want to note that I have been in the detailing field for about 6 years at the time, so I had my fair share of experience, and I was actually one of the best detailers in that department. Now then, one day Jake came up to our department with a sold unit. And I kind of overheard him talking to one of my coworker about me. He was talking behind my back, and I mean he was saying rude stuff about me, but I was able to make out most of the things he was saying. One particular line I did understood was hey I have this car here customer wants you to just remove the stickers, nothing else. Also make sure op never touches the cars I bring up okay? Do I make myself clear? He doesn't know what he's doing, and he's a retard me acting like I didn't just hear what he said, I continued working on my own stuff, and thought to myself what did I do to the guy that he doesn't like me? But whatever I guess, if he doesn't want me to touch his car. Then be it Q malicious compliance. One day I was the only one that showed up. One guy called out, and the other said he'll be really late. I didn't mind. That day was also the day that Jake brought a sold unit first thing in the morning to us for a cleaning, and I was the only one there. He didn't know that. He thought the other guys were here working on another car or whatnot. He dropped the car there, left the keys on a board where we keep the other keys, and he walked away. Little did he know I was alone. I did not touch his car as per his request. The car sat there for four hours. He came up to pick up the car, and noticed that it hasn't been touched at all. He came to me pissed and said why hasn't my car been touched? Did no one touched it? I said no Jake, no one touched the car which he replied with why? The customer is waiting. WTF why didn't you do it? And I said oh no I can't you said not to let me touch whatever car you bring us because I don't know what I am doing, and I an R word, and sadly I am the only one here at the moment so I guess you'll have to wait for the next guy to show up. Assuming he does shows up today he looked shocked, and started apologizing because he said I didn't mean any of that I just ignored him and went back to doing what I was doing. He had to explain to his customers that he had to reschedule them for another date, our boss later found out about what happened, and he had a long talk to him about treating his fellow colleagues with respect, and to not discriminate anyone for any reason at all. I know the ending wasn't as satisfying as most posts here, but I felt good that day when he found out I heard everything he said about me that day. Edit, I feel like I should clear things up from some of the comments I read earlier. I should have reworded the paragraph where I mentioned talking to Mary. Seems like a few mistaken that I was trying to flirt with her in some form of way making it seem like it was the reason why Jake had it out for me. No I wasn't flirting with her at all. For one, the day I spoke to her whether I was flirting or not, I didn't know she was married, and two, I was only speaking to her regarding a vehicle I was interested in buying, she's a sales rep, and I was trying to see what kind of deal she can work with me, you know. Negotiate like everyone does when buying a new vehicle. Tell me to pick up my tools, and get out? I forgot to tell you the printer was fixed. Deleted from petty revenge, I guess it fits better here. I used to carry a toolkit for a large computer company. I'd fix computers, terminals, disk, and tape, and printers. One time I got called to a trucking company in North Carolina to work on a printer. This was a large band printer with paper in a continuous sheet. They do their trucking invoices, and orders on it. It was really messed up. And it took me forever to fix it. Other people had fixed it before, and the customer was pissed. I was young, and just out of the Marines. It was my first shot at fixing it. I finally got it working. I was just cleaning up, and was about to tell the manager, when he came in yelling at me. He told me to pack up my tools, and get out. Now, in the meantime, no trucks are being dispatched. They would print the shipping documents on this thing. So, I said nothing. 
packed up my tools, and left. Two hours later, they get another repair person out from the office in there. He does a test print, looks at the manager, and tells him it's fixed, and is working fine. He said the look on the manager's face was priceless. Be a bitch to a repair person just trying to do her job, don't dispatch trucks for two hours because she just follows your orders, and leaves. Added a few details here I left out another sub. Don't tell anyone you're leaving. I once wound up working for a company because it bought up small competitors, including my employer, across multiple states, and then smushed them together into one big firm with lots of clients. Each of us had different retention bonuses to stop us just walking out. The whole thing was a shit show, so the CEO appointed a new VP to lead my division, Big Boss, and a new HR director. Big Boss was really interested in my specialism, he told me face to face I was doing all the right things for promotion, big things etc but others started demanding big pay rises to stay, and Big Boss was pretty pissed about this, because it screwed up his finance metrics. He gave in a couple of times, and then wrote a memo saying no pay rises were permitted outside of annual review. HR director told everyone they wanted honest opinions about what was wrong, and how to fix them, then started sniping people who'd told the truth, and blaming them for the issues. Great start. Big shock, I didn't get the promotion. A couple of insiders told me he just badmouthed everyone who was up for promotion to justify not offering any. I met him, and said if I wasn't promoted maybe I wasn't a good fit, and should leave, but he disagreed. Said I was a great asset, and he'd figure something out. My manager came back with his offer, it pushed the retention bonus further into the future, added some withheld stock perks, pay rises that would build over multiple of years, and Big Boss would support me for promotion next year. Basically nothing now, but maybe in the future. The shrug as my manager handed it to me said everything. Big Boss then got a surprise opportunity to make a sale personally at a client he knew, and impress our CEO. We had no experience in the area but I had a reputation as being versatile, and I was available so he asked me to head up a group of four contractors, and make it look like a joined up expert team from our company. I decided this was a dead end, and given that my retention bonus was due, although no idea when they would actually cut me a check, I agreed to take a similar job at an unexciting but stable competitor. I wrote Big Boss with my two weeks, it had been a pleasure working with him, and what did he want me to do? It was standard in our industry to get people off the premises ASAP especially when joining a competitor. So I was a bit surprised when he told me to carry on at the client, and don't tell them you're leaving. Truth was, he had nobody to replace me with. Apparently he then went to HR director, and my manager, and lost his shit when it turned out I never actually signed his new retention offer. He tried to blame a couple of people for telling me not to sign, which wasn't true, and upset them as well. HR director then met me for an exit interview, and as I'd heard was pretty stressed because so many people were leaving and their remit was to retain staff. I told them everything was amazing, and I loved the company but this was a huge opportunity. Then they said that because I was quitting, I wouldn't be getting my retention bonus or performance bonuses. It's just industry standard, they said. I explained that the wording was very clear, I had met every requirement, and they said it didn't matter because that wasn't what the words meant, and if you wanted to argue terms, get an attorney. Hmm. So I stayed at the client for the next two weeks. I told the contractors I was leaving, and asked what help they wanted, but they wanted to promote themselves direct with the client so were happier if I kept out of their way. I just met colleagues for coffee, and caught up on old times, talked about my new employer, what would be their final straw, and so on. A couple of days before I was due to finish, the client lead asked me if we could help out on something. Well, I couldn't tell them I was leaving, so I replied unfortunately Big Boss has said I am not permitted to discuss my future with you so you'll need to ask him directly. The client immediately knew what was happening, and was fuming that he'd kept them in the dark. Even more when they found out no replacement had been identified. Then, as HR director had requested, I took an employment attorney friend out for lunch. She was laughing her ass off when she saw the contracts, said they were some of the worst worded she'd ever seen. I was totally right, they owed the bonuses, and HR director was just hoping I gave up. She helped me draft some legal docs stacked on a bunch of additional fees she reckoned we could argue I was owed, and I sent them off. I left the company without ever speaking to Big Boss or HR Director again. I bumped into one of the contractors in a parking lot, and he told me the project had completely imploded. They replaced me with another contractor a month after I left, but by that point they'd stopped working collaboratively, and were competing with each other to win contracts direct with the client. Two of them got terminated for performance issues, another quit, 
and the client decided not to continue using my old company so took on the only remaining specialist contractor direct. I caught up with a former manager for coffee, and they said Big Boss became increasingly paranoid about all the people resigning, and started trying to run office loyalty tests to identify disloyal staff, which of course made even more people resign. Allegedly the CEO was getting angry, because the financial, and sales metrics were getting worse, and the big target client he'd heard about had turned into a huge embarrassment. Eventually, I received a satisfactory offer from the company's law firm. It wasn't a big settlement, but I was so happy that I'd seen it through. My attorney friend said she knew the firm, and it had probably cost triple the amount I'd asked for in legal fees. I wish I could have seen Big Boss's face signing the check. I checked LinkedIn a few months later, and HR director had been terminated. One colleague still at the company said it was officially because there weren't enough permanent employees to justify them staying. Big Boss then vanished a few weeks later, his office was just emptied, and nobody spoke about him again. I still work in the same city, but haven't seen either of them again. If I did, well, I was told to keep working, not to tell the client what was happening, and to get an attorney. So that's exactly what I did. You won't let me come in late, okay I will have 4 weeks off. Set up as you can see from the name I am a teacher, working in the UK. I currently work in a weird school which has lessons from 8.45 to 5.15 so a potential of 8 hours a day. The standard teacher contract is to work 1,265 hours a year, this is called directed time where they can basically tell you what to do, marking, and planning etc., comes as 10% of this a week in most places even if it takes many hours more. At our weird school we have it noted in our contract that we have 1,265 directed hours a year that fall between 8.30, and 5.30, so the 8 hours a day don't count towards our contract hours, just the lessons, and once you are done for the day you can notify your line manager you are going home. Once we hit 1,265 hours we are done for the year but because it is a short year no one will ever hit that plus everyone has exam classes which end before the end of the year so no chance of reaching contracted hours. Malicious compliance last year I found myself with a horrific timetable, lessons first thing in the morning, and last thing. No leaving early for me ever, and those last lessons were not exam classes so no chance even at the end of the year. One thing about the school, the head is very hot-headed. After insets our induction week starts, one of my first lessons in the first week is cancelled due to students doing some administrative stuff so I elect to be a bit late as I could be, and let my line manager know. Unfortunately I had been given a cover lesson that period which I did not know about, and my manager missed my message till too late. I received an email from the head stating I must always be on site from 8.30 as per my contract, and that we could only leave once all my lessons were taught as I might be required for cover. This isn't actually the case, I had been a rep for the contracts, and knew that in order to avoid it being directed time I just had to be available, a piss take of a contract but means we could in theory go to the cinema. Obviously I saw an opportunity, I was going to be in the building for 8 hours a day, 5 days a week but previously only 27 of those hours were directed, and I was free the other 13 but this email from the head was directing me to always be at work. Phoned my union to check, and we read the contract, it says 1265 hours as directed by the principal, and she had just directed me for all 40 hours a week. I am sure anyone with a calculator can tell. If you work 40 hours a week you cover 1,265 hours in 31 and a half weeks, our year was 35, and a bit. As we reached week 30 I emailed HR, and asked what she wanted me to do, I had just realized I was almost at my contracted hours. She told me I could be, and so I showed her the email from the head. Was called into a meeting with the head, and told I was wrong, which was dropped when I read the contract to them, and HR lady agreed. Then I was threatened with a disciplinary which my union rep actually laughed at as he said it would be the easiest constructive dismissal case, and again the HR lady agreed there would be no grounds. Eventually I was offered an additional contract to work the rest of the year at an additional £135 per day which I took. Had been given a slightly nicer timetable this year too. DLDR, head accidentally tells me to work 40 hours a week, and so finish contract early. Edit, had written 50 when I meant 40 and added detail about the additional wage. Don't like it. Leave. This happened today. My husband, and I have been car shopping as I was in an auto accident at the beginning of summer. Our car was totaled in the accident, and it has been a long process. We finally decided on the automobile we wanted, got all our paperwork completed, and had our financing all worked out. All we needed to do was sign all the paperwork, and drive away. The dealership is 90 minutes from our house so we took the kids out of school early and my husband took off work after lunch. 
We wanted to make sure we were home in time to keep our typical school night schedule going. We get to the dealership at our agreed upon time, we did one more test drive, and were ready to sign everything. Then the game started. All of a sudden the finance office wasn't ready for us. Then after an almost two hour wait, they were ready. The finance person started by trying to upsell us on all the add-ons dealers try to sell you. We told her we didn't want anything extra, we just wanted to look at the numbers, read the paperwork, sign it all, and head out. Due to our wait, we had a limited amount of time to get this done, and still be able to get home in time for the kids' bedtime routine. The first thing she does is pull out a different set of numbers than we were originally given, and agree to. All of a sudden there is a dealership fee for selling us a car at this time of year. Nearly 1k for this nonsense. Then she states that if we don't like the fee, we could leave as they have people begging to buy cars from them. So, my husband, and I stood to leave. She then tells us we can't leave as she has already printed the forms. I laughed at her, and told her to go out, and get one of those beggars to buy it. So far the finance person has called twice, and the salesperson has called four times. I guess they weren't expecting someone to get that far, and then walk away.